everyone to district divided a dc sports podcast more specifically a commander's podcast i am mammoth that is k dot and before we begin talking about the dallas cowboys sam howell and all that jazz k dot guess what i'm doing huh. please subscribe to the channel oh. we really appreciate the subscriptions we got a bunch last week if you enjoyed today's video please like it please share it and please comment because we have the comment mailbag coming on later. We're doing this at the beginning of the episode. Yes, How about that? and hit the notification button so you can see exactly when it is that we our uh, our videos get posted. Hit the little bell next to the subscribe thing, and then you can get our videos as soon as force fee right into your Look veins, baby, into your veins. All right, and now that we've done that, let's go ahead and break down what today's episode is going to be. So. K dot Mr. All 22 over here saw the all 22 of last week's debacle against the Cleveland Browns. So he's going to break that down for us and how it affects Sam Howell. We, of course, are going to be talking about Sam Howell starting his first NFL game. If you wanted to skip to that part, we have chapters listed below. You're welcome to do so now. But I think you really should stick around for this uh, all 22 talk because it will affect what we see from Sam Howell. Uh, we're then going to give you our predictions. There's honestly not too much to break down with the Cowboys game, uh, but we're also going to play the game of you guys may have seen the reports. Some of you may have flipped out over it. If there were an eighth seed allowed and we were in contention for it, which we would be, who would you start a QB? Uh, and then we would do the common mailbag at the after the pod as always. K dot go ahead. All 22 last week. We lose a must win game at home to the Cleveland Browns. Talk us through it and then we'll get to Sam Howell. Go ahead. All right, so um, I, I like, especially if I'm so uber critical of the team, I like to watch the All-22 to see if I was justifying what it is that I was thinking or what it is I missed because it, 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 it's very illuminating, right, as far as knowing what's what. So here's what I have. Uh, Carson Wentz did play bad. There's no getting around it. We saw how he really hates uh, Blades of Grass as he was just trying to destroy all of them when every fuck mm -hmm. <laughs> he's thrown into the dirt. Um, but I think what this did more than anything was illuminate to me how out of touch Scott Turner is with what is happening with this team. It is mind boggling. Now, the thing is, there are certain plays that were that happened there in that Cleveland Browns game. that I think a lot of people are like, oh, well, yeah, the, but when you watch the all 22, it sort of shows you something else. So like, I think the, probably the most critic, the most criticized play maybe in the, in that entire game was the fourth and one pitch to Jonathan Williams. Right. Yes. Now before even Don't anything, you with the, dare defend this one sec. Uh, I don't know why Brian Robinson is not in the game. That's number one. Great I don't first get question. It. We all we all see on the on the TV watch on the TV when we're watching on TV. He tries to come out on the field. They tell him to get, get no get back off the field. That alone, not okay. Brian Robinson should be in the game for that. Okay. Now, as for the pitch itself, it wasn't a terrible call. <laughs> No. You gotta be kidding me. All right, look, it's not here. And I, I know, I know, I know, I know. Like, if it was me, I wouldn't have done it. But if you understand to see the flow of the game, if you see you know how many viewers we just lost when you said I, that? I, I, I get it. I know, I know, I know, I know. I understand conceptually what he was trying to do. I don't mm -hmm. do it. And especially you, uh, I don't know if anybody's watched the mic'd up Chase Young from the Browns game. What, what made it not a terrible call? Get to that. What okay. made it not a terrible call? <laughs> Uh, it was unexpected. No, oh, it certainly was. It was unexpected. Um, nope. That that's the only reason it makes a good call. Like <laughs> that's pretty much it. Like and usually, so Can we talk about why it was unexpected. Hold on, but here's the thing: Brian Robinson, who was in on that in the previous game, they run that same play, and he bounces it left for twenty some yards. 
out of nowhere. Mm -hmm. it, it, it's a play that does work, but he has to be in the game. <laughs> and then the, the, the other part is that when, when we send the receiver in motion on that, on the uh, play, their defense, their linebackers completely switch. And I think that caught us off guard. Also, which was completely unexpected to me, Terry McLaurin completely whipped he, on a block. He missed his block. I remember yeah, seeing it was that from rough. the reverse angle. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it's 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 he 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 blocks the wrong guy. He goes after the wrong Probably guy. Probably plays harder with Taylor in. Um, look, very possible. <laughs> there's, there's no getting around it. Um, yeah. So like that play itself, I look at that. And I'm like, all right, there was poor execution. I understand the thought process, but that also goes into what I saw more of the game, which is the the, the criticism I have of that play is Scott Turner being too clever for his own good. If you look at the mic up with, um, with Chase Young they had off the Browns game, there's a moment he's cursing all over the fucking place. It's amazing. Of course. But he's saying, yo, line it up with B-Rob. They can know it's coming. It doesn't matter. Run it up there. Run it up to ass. And it's like, yeah, that's that's what you want to do. Like, that's, that's the thing. Is that every once in a while, you don't have to be too super clever. The, the the thing of it overall that I was looking at is that actually Charles Leno did not play as bad a game as I thought he did. Um, Sam Cosme, I don't know what they're doing with Cosme. In that he was game. at right guard a bit, right tackle right as tackle, well. Yeah, they had him moving all over. Um, he looked better overall at tackle to me. He played most of his snaps at tackle. Yeah, he looks better at tackle, and I do think if I'm looking at the offensive line, Cosme's a Cosme's a piece. I, I'm mm -hmm. interested in seeing where Cosme goes. Uh, he's a guy that I, I want to continue moving with. Um, Leno also, like, he uh, – Leno. look, I, I criticized Leno a lot of the season, and I looked at PFF. I looked at – he's not great, but he's not the reason the offensive line is – I think we go back to Chase Ruye being gone, I think really destroyed that offensive line. Um, I, I think really, really destroyed the offensive line. But the, the, main, the main thing with Washington All-22 that I noticed – was the it's the same thing I said last week, and this is just has me doubled down on. Sure, the offense that was being ran in that game was similar. The last time we saw that offense mm -hmm. was Taylor Heineke and Greenback against Greenback. <clears throat> and if you see the stat line of that game, you can understand why you don't run that offense. And yes, Heineke <laughs> did not have a good game, and you can see majority of the things that go well in that game to put us in the position at the end sort of dumb luck and Heineke just kind of moxying all over the fucking place to get us in the position. But more than anything was getting the balls in the hands of skill position players and having them doing things after the catch um, is what may, is what drove that. Uh, okay. But let, let's, let's go ahead and talk about Wentz for a moment because that's yeah. where a lot of the focus is going to be. So we saw a couple of those duck throws. We saw a lot of check downs. And then when we saw the deep shot, it wasn't very accurate or it was a poor read or both. Yep. What did you see from him? You said he was bad, but like more specifically, you know, people would be interested in that. So what did you see yep. from Carson? They keep having Carson play out a shotgun. And okay. I don't know if that's a Turner thing. I don't know if that's a Carson thing. I know it's a thing that doesn't work. Mm -hmm. Anything that works for us, if you look at the San Francisco game, because I did, I then after I watched this, I did go back to Carson plays play in the all 22. Yep. They're not building anything off of the play action, and they're not doing anything where anybody has to believe that the play action is that there's even a, a chance of a run. Having, having Carson line up under center would be Rob behind him. That alone makes a defense not know. Right. Okay. So before you even get to play action, just off that, you're not sure what's coming. Okay. When he stops back at shotgun, you know what you're playing again. You know what you got to play for. And I think that what you're seeing with Carson is what worked well in the San Francisco game was the quick hits. I started looking also at the episodes that we were doing back when Carson was starting for us at the beginning of the season. Mm -hmm. And the biggest criticism that we had was, get the balls in the playmaker's hands faster. Yes. And they wouldn't do it. Like they had these moments that they would do it for short bursts and like who's the game. Scott Turner. Okay. <clears throat> you can see the play calling just didn't go for it. He wanted more of the vertical throw down field, which you can do, but you have to set that up to happen. So he was once again enamored with the arm talent that everyone talks about. Yes. And the play calling was centered around that. Right. Because if you look at the drive that has the most success in the game, um, 
16 runs out of 21. Yeah, but I will say this. It doesn't look good. That drive is not a good drive. It's, so even it's, the one drive we have. Yeah, it's, it's disjointed yards, shit. It's, it's disjointed as hell. There's a couple third and longs that we have to convert that are kind of like almost dumb luck. But the the uh, the thing with Carson is that if you look at that drive and where he's lining up, that's what should have been the script for the game. Mm-hmm. When I wanted Carson Wentz to start at quarterback, the understanding to me was that Carson would be running the offense that Taylor would be running, right? Um, is that when I say that Taylor's perfect for it, when I say that Carson's perfect for the offense, it's not always the deep throws. It's the, the out. Sounds like you're recovering the Carson take. Yeah, no, no, no. I'm just, I'm just okay. saying as far as this game, as far as this game, just making the, sure the, the thing is that like, we know, and I'm looking, I was looking back at the old episodes, even with right. Taylor, uh, the out routes, the, the, there are certain throws that Taylor just doesn't make, or if he does, they're too consistent, right? Sure. Consistently. Yeah. Or the ball takes too long to get there. Okay. Yeah. Right. Carson, it's not about 40 yards downfield. It's about 10, 15 yards hitting a guy in perfect stride as he's turning out towards the sideline and putting it in the right position. Right. They didn't do that like the entire game. And it's just mind blowing to me is that. So if you ask me, what does this have to do with the game that's coming up with Sam? Right. Allen? Scott Turner doesn't know what he's doing. <laughs> what are the guys? That he that's has? the summary. That's okay, the that's summary. That's what I wanted is you to the, get at, that, right? that, that, that to me is the... Now, Sam Howell, hell of an arm. Hell of an arm. Yep. I think I was playing, you know, I'd do my play Madden with the guys. Uh, yeah, the I game. do remember that. Yep. Sam Howell's arm strength. Top notch. <laughs> so, he's a good player. He he's, is he, a good player. Well, here's the thing. Sam Howell's a... He's, um, yeah, it's, he's a good player. I'm not going to say quarterback yet. He's a good player. Yeah, it's his first he's year. A, we don't know. He's got the playmaking sort of ability. And I also <laughs> rewatched the, uh, some of the preseason games, too. Jesus Christ, I watched a lot of fucking football this week. Um, and the thing, it, that was illuminating, too. And it uh, made me really scared for Sam this game. Because mm-hmm. um, majority of things that are happening good in preseason are not part of the offense. It's off-schedule stuff. I, I imagine when things break that down. this is going to be a more vanilla game plan to keep it easy for Sam. I think this is where you, you talk Unless about. Unless he's an hammer with the arm. Sure, but I think you talk about expectations at the QB position. And by the way, in case it's not clear to everybody, we have moved on to Sam Howell conversation here. Um, I think Scott Turner enamored with Carson's arm strength, a veteran in the league. They traded for him. They have high expectations for the guy. Sam Howell is a rookie. And all the chatter has been, he's not ready. And I think that's something you say to protect the kid, because if you're not getting good quarterback play and Carson hasn't played very well, let's say Taylor hasn't played very well, then the natural question becomes, what about the kid you took? And so I think it's very easy to go, hey, he's not ready so that you kill that conversation early on. I think they're going to do things. I'm hopeful. So, yeah, actually, let me let me rephrase that. I'm hopeful that Scott Turner will make it as easy as possible for Sam Howell. This is what we wanted with Carson, which was just run most of the time. If you look at our Browns preview, it was they average five yards a pop on defense running, right? So run, run, run. Keep it easy for Carson. This game should not be about him at all. What ends up happening, it becomes all about him. So this is where we need to protect. You get another go at this, protect Mm -hmm. Howell. And I'm hopeful that's through the run. As through quick passing, we'll see what happens. I'm cautiously optimistic. I agree that. with you, but that's one of the reasons I went and watched the Green Bay All-22 with Heineke. Okay. Is that Heineke got to start that game, right? Mm, yep. Scott Turner knows Taylor Heineke. Yes, he does. We as fans know Taylor Heineke from all of last year. We do. I also rewatched the episode. I rewatched a bunch of the episodes, seeing what our takes were on the Carson thing back then, just to hold us accountable. <laughs> the, um, at the end of the season, but that'll be next week with the end of year stuff. We'll be more about that. Mm-hmm. The reason I think about it is that the game plan for Taylor in the Green Bay game should have been something to help him out. <laughs> and there was none of that. It was, um, there's none of that, right? So it's like, okay, based on track record, once again, I'm hopeful just like you. You didn't say anything wrong. On track record, uh, 
This dude has maybe a stronger arm than Carson Wentz. Mm -hmm. (laughs) He can run. (laughs) Here we Um, go. (laughs) What makes any of us believe that he this guy's going to set him up for success compared to hey? Yeah, I think this guy can run that off. Uh, right. No, fair enough. Fair enough. Um, but talking about Sam Howell, the player for a moment. So we, we've talked a lot about Scott Turner, our hopes for this week and stuff like that. But talking about Sam Howell, the player at North Carolina. Yep. Um, I'm going to end up sharing just now a graphic with you guys. Uh, it's a chart from Ben Robinson at Benj underscore Robinson on Twitter, author of grindingthemocks.com, where basically he aggregates a whole lot of data. We've had him on the show before uh, a couple of hey, times. Follow on Twitter. Yeah, follow him on Twitter. Excellent follow. Um, Where he basically aggregates all this data and goes, where is this guy supposed to go based on what most people are saying? And he has, you know, fans, he has experts and then the media. And so he has those different draft types that you're you're seeing on the screen. Sam Howell, June 2021, was a top five pick, according to most people. And it slid. And the thing is, I think the reason it slid is because he ended up taking a lot of sacks. He had the fifth highest sack rate in all of college football. That North Carolina offensive line, not good. Good news for him is that he's suddenly prepared to an extent for our offensive line, which, by the way, is going to be missing any number of people. We're going to be missing Sadiq Charles due to a concussion. We're going to be missing Cornelius Lucas. We're going to be missing Andrew Norwell. Uh, None of these necessarily bad things, (laughs) but just to say that we're going to be missing some regulars and some depth over there. Sam Howell, his junior season, which is when this sort of dip occurred, 24 touchdowns, nine picks. And when he was a sophomore, he had 30 touchdowns, seven picks. And all the while he can run, all the while he's got some mobility, some escape ability. You saw some pretty wow escapes during the preseason. It's not something you want him to get used to, but it's something he's capable of doing. So there is plenty of reason for optimism here and to enjoy the game for the lens of let's see what the kid can do. Um, I would expect even Diame Brown to get a lot more snaps because he is a teammate of Sam's dating back to the UNC days as well. There is some chemistry over there and that may help him with the comfort comfortable stuff. Once again, this is all entirely dependent on a OC that doesn't know what he's doing based on what we both think. Uh, K-Dot, your thoughts. I want to counter on everything you just said. Go ahead. All right. I'm going to keep it short and sweet. Please do. Um, You said he got sacked a lot. In he, did. he did. He uh, did. And so, he escaped a bunch, too. Got it. Totally understood. Yeah. Um, We have a bunch of injuries on the offensive line, as you said. We, we don't even know who's going to be out there. I think Chris um, Paul will be. Six on the round pick. Great. Um, And uh, Michael Parsons is on the other side of the football this, yes, uh, this week. Got That's it. Correct. Got it. Um. You also look at North Carolina and De'Ami Brown, and one of the things that they always talk about was the deep threat, the deep ball, right? Yeah. Now, the thing is, in this offense, if you're going to throw the deep ball, that means you probably need time in the pocket, and um, you're going to need time for things to set up to to throw the ball downfield, right? That's a good podcast. Yep. So (laughs) Scott Turner, who likes people to throw the ball downfield, on these really long developing things, that was another thing that the All-22 showed me. Mm -hmm. Everything takes a very long time to develop downfield. Okay. And you're not, you don't, you don't set up a play action. So defense doesn't have to worry about, there's not even a millisecond. The defense has to rebound off anything. It's not a pass. Let's go back. Um, This is a nightmare. (laughs) This is a nightmare scenario. Like, look, the only thing that can protect Sam at this particular point is the same thing that we saw in the preseason, which is what happens off schedule. Dallas doesn't really have a lot of game script on him and he might be able to pull something out of his ass because he has moxie but as far as lining up to x's and o's what he did well in north carolina we see in this offense right now that's not a recipe for success with an offensive coordinator that wants to do the things that he did in north carolina Mm -hmm. which is not a recipe for success um with the probably most lethal pass rush in the nfl and also a secondary who, while they can get beat, beat, it does happen, have ball hawks. Um, they take chances. And with things being slowly developed, usually when you have a defense that's willing to take chances compared to not, mm-hmm. they get burned when there's some trickery. They get burned when there's play action. They get burned on those things. If you right. can't execute play action and everything's slowly developed, 
it's a lot more forgiving to those ball hawks that take chances. I just say on paper, I've never seen a more lopsided matchup in Washington in a very long time. Sure. Sure. I mean, we're it's, playing a lot of backups. The thing we thought Dallas was going to do, which was play a lot of backups, <laughs> we're actually doing instead. So, right. yeah, this is going to be tough because Dallas is technically playing for the division and potentially the one seat. So they really want this win. <laughs> so, yeah, no, it's it's going to be uh, it's going to be interesting. But I wanted to also say, Dot, that <laughs> for Sam Howell, uh, in terms of expectations, I have none. No, I want to start with that. And I want to say that to me, this is only a high upside <laughs> possibility right i mean barring injury of course but for me it is he gets a full nfl game which is Mm -hmm. good um if it goes well there's reason for optimism he's playing against a pretty solid dallas defensive line and he's able to move the ball up and down the field that's pretty cool if it doesn't go well well hey i mean he's playing with house money Uh, once again there's zero expectations the offensive line is supposed to suck and if he gets sacked a lot, he gets sacked a lot. We know we have a lot of things to work on. So for me, for Sam, that's why I'm coming from the lens of I'm going to enjoy this because it's a great opportunity for him to increase his stock. And I don't think it's going to lower his stock for anybody. I'm Does with that make you. Sense? I get what you're saying conceptually. Sure. I think. All right. All fans, if you're watching this, as you should be, if you're watching it, you, you're a good fan of the commanders. You should be watching the entirety of our podcast every Obviously. week. Obviously. There's nothing to learn from this game. Do not take anything away from this game. This is not about that. This is literally one cog in Sam Howell's career. And that's the only positivity we get out of this, to me, is you give him a week of knowing you're the starter, how it is uh-huh. you interact with guys on the uh, on the team, so far, he's getting rave reviews. Um, it's how it is you handle preparation. How does you do all those things? Um, you sat on the sidelines this entire season. You've seen what it is that the pros have had to do. And now you're going to see what happens as far as uh, game time. This, yeah. is a le- this is learning for Sam. Whatever happens in the game. If he goes out there and he goes, goes fucking nuts, right? I don't think it's a grand indictment on anything from Sam. And if he goes out there and he, the only thing to me that we have to do is Mm -hmm. not get him killed. Right. Don't get this man killed out there. And I also wouldn't call him the long-term starter if he has a good game. I think that's what you mean by there's nothing to take. (laughs) There's nothing. There's You can get increasingly optimistic about the kid. No, I'd say for Washington fans, keep everything in your fucking pants. Like we we get way too fucking high and low. We're playing purely hypothetical here. He purely throws. hypothetical is the so the, the, sorry, the, but purely hypothetical yeah. is once again, you have a guy mm-hmm. who in preseason the best things that he did were off script, right? Yeah, <clears throat> you have a guy that there is no regular season tape on. That's a He's good point. Have That's a good point on the tape bit because even if he did de- him go off against right, even if he yeah. goes and throws like we Sam Ellinger looked good for a week, like it's doesn't matter. What I'm saying That's a good is point. That, like. That's a good point. All of this. And you also got to realize the Dallas Cowboys, even though they have stuff to play for, look at that injury report. They look at what happened to Washington over the last four weeks. They, I do not blame them for overlooking us. I don't Mm -hmm. blame them for overlooking us. They're already looking towards the fucking playoffs, right? That's one of the reasons Dallas is going to fucking fail. But the, the, but, but for us, I just don't think, I think all the takes that happen after this week (coughs) need to be about, what does Scott Turner do to protect him? That, to me, is the biggest thing to take away from this game. Your sole focus is Scott Turner. What did Scott Turner do to protect this kid? I think it's fair. I think I have mentally moved on and <coughs> have moved on from Scott Turner for quite some time. But the reality yeah, is the Miami might be getting rid of McDaniels. Daniels. <clears throat> Don't get me started on that, my friend, because, oh, yeah, that, that's going to be a next week conversation. You talk about hypotheticals in dreamland. <laughs> Woo. All right. So let's uh, let's go ahead and just jump over to the predictions in that case, because there isn't really a whole lot. Truth be told, with the injury report we have, we don't know who the fuck's playing like so we and it also doesn't mean anything for us. Um, we'll get to the predictions for this game um, and then we're going to have the hypothetical of that if the NFC added an eighth seed because of uh, all the scheduling craziness, 
who would you start at QB? So, uh, KDOT, the line is seven points. Over under is 40 and a half. Go ahead. Uh, give me the commanders. No, I'm checking. <laughs> commanders to cover. No, uh, okay. no, fuck no. Uh, the, <laughs> Uh, Cleveland beat us 24 to 10 last week. They I'm going to say 28, 14 okay. this week. Uh, Cowboys. <clears throat> Once again, even if we win this game, I don't give a fuck other than laughing at some Cowboys fans. And even at that, I don't really care. I'm waiting for them to collapse in the fucking playoffs. Um, all I want to do is for Sam to be healthy by the end of the fucking game. That's it. Okay. And, um, I'm hoping there's a part of me that hopes Scott Turner shoots himself in the fucking foot on this. Fair, fair enough. Um, and I, I don't fault you for feeling that way. I'm gonna go 24 21. Um, and I'm Dallas wins. Uh, but I think Dak's been turning the ball over like a motherfucker recently. Um, and even though we're gonna be without Curl and St. Juiced, his decision making's not been great recently. So I think he ends up throwing a couple uh for whatever reason, which keeps us in the game, but we it's still not enough to win. Um, and so yeah, I'm going 24 21. Dallas. So they Here's end up the thing. If we were at full strength, it's a big good game. Yeah, I think it would be. Big, good um, game. I and still I think, think it'll be a good thing because Dallas is going to Dallas to your to your point way back when. Um, and I think they they are going to make this a nervy game for themselves. Uh, so twenty four twenty one sure. is my uh, prediction there. Now, K Don, let's say that both the AFC and the NFC added an eighth. Seed. It's not going to happen, but let's say that they did, right? Because that was a report yesterday. It is no longer a report uh, today. So if we were alive for it, which would involve beating Dallas to get in as the eighth seed, beating Dallas and having the Seahawks lose to the Rams because the Lions and Packers play each other, one of them would have a worse record than us by default. Who would you go with as your starting quarterback for this week? I'd have Sam Howell start at the quarterback and then afterwards Ron Rivera tell us he didn't know we can make the playoffs. Yeah. Okay. That was what I was going to say as well, because oh. there's no <laughs> way he would have known. No, you would need Grant Paulson to tell him. <laughs> like uh, no, I, I don't want to win this game. I don't want to, I have no desire to win this game. And I know it's against the Cowboys. I don't give a shit. I got, I don't want to win this game. Mm-hmm. I'm like, like to me after the San Fran game and the way the San Fran game kind of went down, um, while I had hope as far as Carson, if Scott had his head out of his ass to me, you know, what? I'm going to be honest after the second Giants game, we didn't deserve it. Yeah, that's a point of contention for a number of fans as well, just I because know. of the refs. And I, I know you and me have the same opinion, which is that we didn't do enough yeah. to through that point. Yes, it ultimately ended up with the with the refs. But yeah, no, I, I understand what you're saying there. Um. I would have started Taylor. Um, and I think just because when you get an opportunity, I think you, you gotta go. Think. I yeah. think you have to go for it. Um, even though I would want to see Sam Howell, right? I would want to see that, like, you know, the way that this last week has gone and how disgusting it's felt knowing that we're eliminated to suddenly be uneliminated and all the guys that did not practice, I'm willing to bet a bunch of them could go and we're just doing this because the season's over. Having that switch occur too. Mm-hmm. Do we even put Gibby on IR? Like there are all sorts of questions, right? That suddenly get put in. So the whole thing would have been chaotic to begin with. But I think when you got a chance to get in the dance, you got to, you got to do it. Um, And I would have gone Taylor. There's a right answer to the question and you gave it. Okay. The right answer is Taylor Heineken. You go and you try. It's for the game. That's the correct answer. Yeah. Um, I'm doing more of a fucking bit, but it's, there, there is legitimately a right answer. And if he did anything other than that, they'd want his hat on the fucking pipe. And I understand that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so with that, why don't we just jump over to the comment mailbag where we got a ton of comments. We got 25. That includes replies. And we really greatly appreciate you guys for commenting. Exactly. What we're going to do is just read the base comments. So just without the replies, and I will mention which ones had replies if you want to dive in there and see for yourself because some of them had a number of replies and it was quite cool including the very first one uh from al rose shout out al appreciate it you've commented before and it goes i disagree about cleaning house last week i was very adamant about cleaning house k dot i think you were also like this is not necessarily the coach's staff i don't think you went the full distance but i think you were kind of there with me 
I'm an emotional Commanders fan. I think we're going to go more into detail with the offseason. We will. In season next review episode. next week. Yep. And I think I have calmed down quite a bit since last week. Okay. Or so, since earlier this week. But So anyway, so there's Al Rush. I disagree about cleaning house. The coaching is good enough to compete, but the talent on the field isn't there. The QB situation is a mess. That is partially Ron Rivera's fault. But I think they've overachieved given the mediocre amounts of talent they have. So this got 10 replies. Um, yeah. And I think I think you can guess why. Yeah. Um, and, and some heavy hitters in there, too, including Tony. Shout out, Tony, who uh, he and Al were going back and forth a little bit. And speaking of Tony, he had himself a comment as well. Somebody here banged the table and whispered, Carson Wentz is perfect for this offense that was fun. he's right. perfect that guy was right the scott turner offense is incapable and wentz is the perfect qb k dot good for you to own up and take responsibility for being as you so eloquently put it the angry black guy and then three clapping emojis over there that is tony's comment there was a reply there as well but once again you can just you can go through and read those replies uh kayla me can shout out kayla Hire a new GM. Go get the that assistant GM Kansas City got. Let him make changes and create his mold. This coaching staff ain't it. Coach-centric approach is a huge failure because who's holding the loyal guy who can't take accountability accountable? Ah, that's a terrific question. New blood is necessary. Our talent carried us this season. So opposite of what Al said, our talent carried us this season, not the coaching. We don't need an elite QB and a fresh offensive mind. Uber talented in both sides of the ball, but there's a bogus scheme on both sides. We're wasting picks as and money as long as these guys are here. So you're, you're beginning to see both sides of it, right? We've got one guy saying, hey, the coaching is good enough. We've got another guy saying we're uber talented on the field. So you can see the uh, the range in which Commanders fans are currently going. Uh, then we've got Blood Clot. Shout out Blood Clot. Fire Ron. Glad he made it through his cancer and is in remission, but football coaching is not for you. He seems almost senile. He got to create his dream team coaching staff, and they all suck. I'm so ready for new ownership and just a clean house. He says he needs five years to turn this team around. I don't need to see any more from him. If we got a great QB next season, it will be the same result because the rot starts at the top and trickles down. I feel like the team is still an attractive team for other coaches. We have great players on this team. We just need someone to steer the ship. Do you think Dan got involved and pressured Ron and Ron finally said, fuck it. You want Wentz? You're going to get Wentz. What do you think of that, Kata? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Okay. Uh, I could see it uh, just given the track record of Yacht Bitch, but it's neither here nor there. The point is he's here. Uh, Tony with another comment. Shout out, Tony. To the guy in the comments that disagrees about cleaning house. So, so we've got the replies uh, to that comment. And then we've also got this, which is a base comment. <laughs> this is Al. Straight up fucking hornets. This is, this now. is Al, <laughs> Al, Al. Honestly, with a brilliant comment from a let's get it going in, in here. Uh, to the guy in the comments that disagrees about cleaning house. Here's the thing. In 12 years as a head coach, Ron Rivera's teams have finished the season with five wins once, six wins twice, seven wins six times, and then 11, 12, and 15. Update, and he gives the various records for the coaches. Ron Rivera, 98, 92, and 1. Scott Turner, 21, 27, and 1. All the ones because of this fucking Giants game. JDR, 100, 103, and 1. Martin Mayhew, 62, 101, and 1. Marty Herney, 113, 141, and 1. On to Lonnie Thomas. Sorry, I know I'm just sort of burning through these. Um, they need to take the GM away from Ron, and he should just be a coach. Honestly, not a bad idea if you're going to stick around. Get I mean, a GM. Technically, he's not the GM. Well, yeah, he isn't, but uh, you, you know he's involved big time in those. Um, and then we have Bradley Campbell. Ron would not have a head coaching job had it not been for Cam Newton. I totally agree with that. I totally agree with that. Um, e. Jackson with a couple comments. Why, why, why do you think Carolina fired him? Him being Ron. Why Ronnie is and just loss. Uh, and then the other one. Yes, Ronnie don't care about winning. He's just happy to have an NFL coaching job. Win or lose, he gets paid. Uh, shout out to e. Jackson for the comments there. We've got Marvin Doxy, I believe. Commodes are full. Please flush. <laughs> and then we got A. Lawrence. Get a younger coach and staff. And finally, Hogskins. I love this cat's passion. Speaking nothing but facts. Are you the cat in that case or am I? Or both of us? Mm, did he, he, it's not pluralized. It's not pluralized. It is cat. So only one of us yes, can be the cat. Be the cat. And I'm going to go with me because you wanted to start Carson. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. I ain't going to fight. I ain't going to fight. 
I'm not even gonna fight you. We we appreciate we appreciate all the comments here, guys. Uh, and once again, this was District Commander. I was right. <laughs> More specifically, a Commander's podcast. Thank you guys so much for listening. If you enjoyed today's episode, please like it, please share, please subscribe to the channel. That helps us big time. And comment as you always do. We do turn on your notifications. Them. And please turn on those notifications. So we will be back on Monday. We're gonna recap the game and we're gonna begin talking about the future a little bit. What's in store for this franchise? Maybe we'll get into the sale a little bit and dive into Dan Snyder and what's going on over there. But until season then, review. Take it easy. A season review after the pod begins right now. I can't wait for next week. I have so much I want to say. Dude, this Mike, been... this Mike McDaniel report. I, I'm not I'm not going there, obviously, because even with the current ownership, that's never going to happen. But like, it would be so cool to have him as our head coach. Just wishful thinking. I'm just thinking more offense coordinator. Oh, because he would have to take a step down. I think that, well, he goes, Miami's still going to be paying him the rest of that contract, right? Until mm-hmm. somebody else takes it over. But I think there could be some sort of settlement or some sort of deal that allows him to walk and go somewhere else. So we have enough awareness to let go of Scott Turner. That's the loyalty that Ron has. And then we bring in Mike McDaniel. I think that there's a good chance Scott Turner is getting let go this offseason. Okay. Okay. Well, and if that's the case, then. If that's the case, it opens up and then you do that. Um, but that, They're not going to fire him, though. I mean, Miami would be insane to do that. For Tom Brady opinion. and Sean Payton, they'd do it. That's true. That is the other side of that report is that they could potentially get both guys. But I think I still think even with the way the season went, and I know it's disappointing for Miami, but mm-hmm. um, they're ahead of schedule to me. I agree. So like it, it'd be stupid. And I think after whatever was true or false with the Brian Flores uh, situation there in Miami, it still left Miami's left the stank. Stephen Ross and guys have left the stank too. And I'm not rooting for them overall, although if Tom Brady's there, I'm rooting for anybody that has Tom Brady because I'm a Tom Brady guy. But um, I I almost love to see this happen in Crash and Burn. I, there's a part of me that like is really, really want to see this Crash and Burn. I am a person that does believe Sean Payton's a little overrated um, as being too. the savior. I think mm-hmm. he's got a little of that John Gruden energy, um, which is that like, no, don't get me wrong. I think he's an offensive minded, great, great, great offensive mind. Um, but I also look and I'm looking at all these coaches are really when you really think about it. Right. What coaches all time throughout the history of the NFL mm-hmm. can we really look to as being great coaches that didn't have great quarterbacks with them? Yeah, there are very few. Uh... It's Joe Gibbs is the number one. Right. I would he did say... it with three different quarterbacks. But, like, really think about the upper echelon of coaches. Which ones would you put up there that did not have top flight talent at quarterback? That is tough. Um, Don Shula had Dan Marino. Right. Andy Bill Reed Walsh for had the longest Montana time has Young. now Mahomes. And, I mean, before that, McNabb was McNabb good. was a starter for a decade. He was really good. Four NFC championship games. He was yeah. good. Yeah. No, no, you're right. I mean – uh, Belichick, of course, with Brady, like you have to have a guy and then it helps elevate your coaching position. Absolutely. Which is why I actually like the job Rex Ryan did with Mark Sanchez. Like, you know, right. because defensive mind that defense was brilliant, but he at least got the defense to the level it needed to be in order to. And you see well, a repeat in Jacksonville when what they you have, have to do right? defense if you don't have Bortles. Right. Right. You got to do what the Ravens did when they had the success in 2000. You got to. Right. The, or uh, even like I I like Eli Manning. So I guess Brian Billick gets thrown in there. Brian Billick gets thrown in there, but uh, like Tom Coughlin with Eli Manning and the Giants, there was a yeah, defensive. I, I think that's teams, a good shout. And there's Eli Manning, almost this aw shucks dumb luck sort of thing happens. He just got fucking thick. Yeah. Eli Manning to me is the Forrest Gump of football. Um, just he, <laughs> it, it never looks great, but it just so it, it works, works out in his favor. Yeah. Um, and I, I forever love him for that. I'm I'm an Eli guy. I can finally admit that now he's not a fucking giant. But uh, so I think to me is that one thing that I've been looking at when it comes to this franchise and me and Brendan were talking about this uh, the other day. Yeah. Who's the last guy that we've had for Washington that started five consecutive years day one at quarterback? Oh, man. I don't know. It's Mark Rippon. I was going to say, I don't think it's happened in my lifetime. It's Mark Rippon. Then even before that, it gets really close, right? So like uh, Theismann has just over five. Then Jurgensen has just over five. 
Williams does not his have jerseys over five. being retired. His jersey, uh, God, I, I don't even want to think about that. And they don't even, they didn't even invite uh, Frank Herzog. Maybe the, the spirit thing. of Sonny will appear in Sam Howell. I mean, he'll be smoking fucking cigar smoke, be all over the goddamn place. Maybe you know, just give him one. Um, as he's eating his chicken tenders, he had that crazy guy. behind the back pass. I don't know if you've ever seen the Sonny video Jergis of that. is the Sonny fucking man. I, wild, I'm a huge Sonny He was Jergis. Mahomes Sonny before Mahomes. <laughs> yeah, no, Jergison was the fucking dude. Yeah. Um, come out of Philly doing his whole. Yeah. What a guy. <clears throat> but um, so I look at that and I'm saying, like, if we look at Washington overall, right? Mm-hmm. How many Hall of Fame quarterbacks do we have that have played for us over the entire course of our franchise? I mean, it's probably just Sonny. It's Sammy Ball and Sonny Jurgensen. Those are the right. only. Oh, two. Sammy, of course. Yeah, yeah. Those are the only two. Theismann probably was on his way, sort of, until, until the, the Lawrence end. Taylor tackle, yeah. right? Because Lord knows what would have happened if Taylor doesn't hurt him. We would have maybe won more games, and that been it. Um, I think with Washington is that there has been a severe lack of quarterback continuity. Yeah, that has almost broken our brains. So thinking that like the coach will be the guy that does this or the, the combination of coach and this, like the closest we had to somebody who should have been the starter for five years plus was Kirk Cousins. Correct. And look, I know that a lot of fans hate Kirk Cousins, but I look at the organization and I still think it is an absolute failure. The amount of times we had to franchise tag him. Mm-hmm. It is an absolute failure that we didn't have him under <clears throat> a longer term contract for cheaper, what he was initially asking for. And yep. to be able to have a guy kill it or at least have somebody that we have continuity at the quarterback position to continue to build and to get better around. Would anyone not say Kirk Cousins right now over anything we've seen at quarterback in Washington since he's left? I actually do think you would get some that don't, but, but I see I'm, what you're I'm just, saying. I'm, I'm, no, I'm not, I'm not saying the possibility of somebody else. I'm saying legitimately what we've, the guys we've what had we've seen. since Kirk Cousins, would and you I'm not trade you. I'm telling you, and I know we've had this conversation. Maybe Alex Smith. Some people would also take Heineke. I'm just telling you. I'm just telling you what <laughs> others would say. That's why I rewatched the episode. That, I rewatched the episode that we had. That was the season in review last year. Last year. Okay. And me and you both said unequivocally, we've seen enough. Of yes. Heineke. Yes. Like, that is true. Just, like, that is true. But I also, but I also, and I also remember going into the off season, we said, Ron Rivera has to address the quarterback position. We did say that. Yes. Now, absolutely. We did any number of episodes on Deshaun. <laughs> Russell, here's the thing. Aaron, this is the only yeah, reason yeah. I'm not is a- now I am angry with Ron about a lot of things. Right. Mm-hmm. But think about this. When we got Carson Wentz, there was a, huh? Mm-hmm. Yep. Mm-hmm. And then it was, all right, let's make ourselves feel a little bit better about it. Or how could this work? Right. Which is natural as a sports fan. Who do we want? Who is our number one? Mine was Aaron. Got it. But who was in everybody's like top three? Oh, Russ. What would we be thinking right now if Russell Wilson that contract? Were I know. Thank goodness. And it's fair to say we dodged a fucking bullet there. <laughs> uh, mine was Aaron. Oh, you know what? It may have honestly, it may have been Deshaun first. It may have been. It was Aaron Deshaun. We all thought about Deshaun at least to some degree. Yeah, we, we all did. We all did mm-hmm. because we were looking at it purely from a football perspective. Maybe we shouldn't have. I still don't love the shot. This one's no, I, no, no, like, no, 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 I don't either. And right. so, but at the time, I remember remembering his Houston highlights and going, "Well, legally, if he's cleared, I mean, then you got to at least consider the guy." Um, yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, 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 I'm just saying, like, if we but knew we had right. to, to your to your Russ point, that could have been really bad because they, I mean, they fired their coach before the end of the season. And but that was also because of the ownership contract. change, right? So, like, they, yeah. the, the, and this is what goes into what our next episode is going to be is just what we have to do to limit the destruction of the future of the franchise and limiting Ron's power. And there's so the a special, comes. there's a special league meeting going on Friday today, <laughs> and the absolute dream because now I'm in fantasy oh, yeah. world. I'm just telling you right now. Oh. Not only do they discuss all the playoff stuff, but they're like, oh, by the way, there's a vote. <laughs> Yeah, By the way, I mean, I mean, I mean, yeah. <laughs> but here's the thing. I will say this. Um, I was talking to somebody uh, about this is that everyone thinks March as far as the league meetings. Right. Yeah. Do not put it past the league of wanting to get rid of Dan Snyder so much. They meet Sooner. for something else. Yeah. Um, yeah. I wouldn't put it past them to do that. So I, just what I'm saying as far as the quarterback position in Washington. Right. 
D, <laughs> I'm not trying to step on next episode. No, that's fine. This offseat, I know. I'm going to say that. Quarterback is has been the biggest issue. I think it's been bigger than coach. Mm-hmm. I think it's been bigger than owner. I think quarterback has been the number one reason that we haven't gotten to where we need to. And sometimes that quarterback thing has been because of the coach or because of ownership, especially because they haven't picked the right guy, of course, right? We right. have it. But then you have certain situations where they haven't been patient enough or they don't, they've been too hard at it. I never forgive Joe Gibbs for not going back to Patrick Rambert. I That is one thing I'll never forgive Joe for. Because Mark Brunel was washed up when he got here. Like the, um, the, the, I don't, the fact that Joe couldn't get it through to him that he just didn't want to deal with a young quarterback. He didn't want to teach a young quarterback. It was just wasn't where he was in life that he wanted to do that. Yeah. And to me, it's like, all right, well, that's a waste, right? And if you even look before that, Steve Spurrier letting Patrick Ramsey get his head bashed in for a whole fucking season did not help, right? He got no, fucking shell shot like uh, fucking David Carr in Houston. Um, but then you look past that, RG3 to Kirk Cousins, right? RG3 was... Snyder's guy. It looked great at first. It did. Then he gets hurt. Kirk Cousins steps up. Mike Shanahan, Kirk Cousins, right? But because of the RG3 thing, you got to start RG3 again, right? Because the ownership's made. You got to do it. So then waste a period of time. Yeah, we have found any number of ways to fuck up this. You position. see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, and then yeah, you got course, Jay Gruden has to take course. over for the Kirk Cousins. And, and, that, and that roots, that absolute <laughs> roots in the ownership stuff i mean oh, yeah, heck, yeah. even when rivera showed up i'm and rest in peace dwayne haskins but like i'm sure one of the caveats was because once again jay yeah. gruden didn't want dwayne haskins right you have to make it work with this guy what pick did we have pick two what do we know about marty herney what do we know about ron rivera what do we know about cam newton big guy strong, like justin herbert's in that conversation a hundred percent right so like so the, ownership the, matter. It, it all trickles down. I, I think it was blood clot that was talking about it. A- and uh, same with Tony. Like it does. It is top down and it all affects each other. They so all interact. So let me ask you this. Sure. And this is just me and where my thought experiment went with Ron Rivera, who we're all upset with, right? Yes. You can't count your one on the quarterback position because that was part of the getting the job. I actually give him credit for pulling Haskins when he did. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So mm-hmm. you, you can't really even count your one as far as whatever's happened to the quarterback position because it was set that you had to do this, right? Yes. Year two, Ryan Fitzpatrick. None of us had a problem with that. Thought it was actually might be pretty good, right? What happens week one? Hurt. Mm-hmm. It's over, right? I'm not going to lie. I was pretty hyped. We were hype as shit. Did, we were well, mad hype. Because, because, <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm not talking about Fitzpatrick. I was hype about Heineke at that point because oh, yeah. that had just come off that insane playoff performance. Right. So, we, and that offseason, I was saying, why don't you give him a team friendly deal? Let's see. And we ended up getting to see it. And that was the thing. This isn't it. That was the thing. It was like, you added Fitzpatrick. We were like, all right, this is cool. But if Fitzpatrick sucks, guess what? We got a fucking Heineke, right? Yeah. So, like, he addressed the quarterback position the best way he thought. None of us had an issue with it. Went in that season. Last season ends. All of us are saying you got to do something better than Taylor Heineke. Yes, we did right? say that. You have to do something better than Taylor Heineke. They shoot for the moon in Russell Wilson, where if he had gotten it, we'd be in a worse position than we are right Especially now. Especially what, what we know about Scott Turner. This shit would not have worked. It would have been a colossal shit show because Russ yeah. is probably going to, I want to do things this way. Scott's going to be, I want to do this this way. Here's 160. And here's the thing: that 163 million would be higher for him to fucking come here if he would agree, right? So yeah. you can't get out oh, of that until 20. I got a question. I got a question. Now that we're yeah. in fantasy world, uh, given where we think the <coughs> leaks may have come from, if we have Russell Wilson, do the leaks even come out? Fuck. I don't, I don't think so. I don't think so. I so think we're so might, invested we got in Dan. that QB position. <laughs> we, we got Dan. We got Russ. We got, Dan and we got no longer. Colossal. I think they come out maybe next year or something like that. If it's still failing, I don't think they come out this year, depending so, on where you think the leaks came from. Right. So wild. <laughs> he addresses the quarterback position this offseason, right? We don't yeah. draft a guy. I don't think anybody's upset with Jahan Dotson being here. Um, but the uh but you address it, and the, the, here's the, the criticism is you addressed it, you got it wrong. We had other needs that would have been better. But I stand firm that if he did not address the quarterback position in a significant way this offseason, we would have been going for his fucking head 
coming into this season. Yes, that is true. So that to me, true. I'm going back to you remember I said coaching need five years. That five year timeline is looking pretty legit to me right now. I'm being if I'm being completely honest. Okay, okay. If I'm trying to remove my emotion as best as I can from it. This yeah. season is the biggest failure of the of the era of his round. Absolutely. And, and it was but, called make or break, and he said put it on me. Like all that stuff 100%. happened. Um, the reason I ended up shifting, and I can understand being called reactionary and stuff like that. And I have no problem with that. Yeah. Um, I just think once I sort of notice I don't see any future uh with a coach in this situation based on their thought process, based on the way things work. I mean, heck, you even saw it with the uh with the way the quarterback position was handled this week, the early report was Taylor Heineke was going to start. Then it was, okay, Sam starting Rivera announces it, but then it comes out after that, that he actually talked to Taylor and that go fuck himself. Taylor was like, basically, <laughs> yes. Like, why would I do that? You went away from me in a moment where I felt I should have been the starter. Your boy fucked up. And uh, now let's Sam do it. So uh, you see to me enough evidence to go, can this really he be righted? I think it's a, Exactly. I think it is. You never say never. I think the probability is so low. It's not worth it. I'm just saying when Derek Carr is throwing me high side to Jahan Dotson and I'm not here. You just know it's going to happen, don't you? I'm just I, I'm I mean, like, but here's the, it only goes to whether or not the new ownership can get in place to limit his ability to do things. Because if he knows his job's on the line, which he's not a fucking idiot, he knows his job's on the line. Um, and that's going to be he's a big part a- of next week is how much freedom do these guys have? Because that is the biggest. Topic. They have all the freedom right now. Right. That is the biggest topic Dan doesn't aside give a from fuck. the ownership, but it's tied <laughs> right. in. Right. Dan doesn't Dude, give they're a fuck. Not gonna be, they're not going to be Dan's picks anymore. No. He could say trade he doesn't all. Give it doesn't a, matter. Dan's in England trying to buy a Premier League team. He doesn't give a shit anymore. It's Imagine over. Imagine if he bought Manchester United just for the Arsenal fans. Be hilarious. Oh, God, Dan be doesn't hilarious. give a fuck. So I'm saying right now, but I just think everybody oh, this cool. season, I understand what everybody thought. We'll talk about it more next week, but I just think the Ron Rivera era looks bad this season, but if you really look at it and of being as honest as you can be about it, we are behind schedule, no doubt. And it's because mm-hmm. of one really bad decision. They shouldn't have trusted Wentz. But I look at the other things that were out there, the other options, and I say, if any of the other things had worked out that would have looked better in the offseason, we'd be in a much worse situation. Yes, that is true. That is completely true. Um, especially in the Russ case. Now, I do have a, I do have a question, which yeah. is that. So this off season, last off season, I said <laughs> quarterback, and I think it was understandable because if you even looked at ESPN and PFF metrics, uh, if you subscribe to those, and if you don't, fair enough. Uh, but if you do, our offensive line was playing really, really well, sixth rank. So, so we thought we had that salt. Mm-hmm. We clearly don't. Nope. How do you this this lends into next week? But yeah. I guess I guess so. Maybe we should cut it off here, just about. But like you got to think maybe a bit of a preview. We look at addressing the offensive line first and foremost. The the, the uh, here's wide receiver, running back, defensive line, one safety. Everything else is on the table. Okay. Yeah. Is, I, I, would you disagree with that? No, 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 I'm not. I'm not. Initially, when you were saying wide receiver running back, because we were initially talking position of need, I was like, this is oh, no, no, yeah. interesting. And no, then I'm saying everything like, else is it. on the table except for those positions. Right? I would agree. I everything would agree. else should be on the table except for those positions. It's because even if I look at safety, the best two safeties are probably what forced in curl. And it doesn't yeah. really work that well when they're both on the field. So like it's. Yeah, I, I think I think in order to because. Under the assumption you're not getting an elite QB, which I think is a fair assumption because it has been the case. Hard time, big base. O line, be ready for it. O, o- line <laughs> needs to be. O line needs to be good. I'm not even going to comment on that. O line <laughs> needs to be good before you can even address QB because uh, depending on who you are, even uh, if we were to talk about David Carr, a lot of people thought David Carr was really good, but he just kept getting murdered back there. That goes to my all twenty two. Scott Turner's not doing the offensive line any favors. Oh, boy. That's the thing. That's the issue. Like, to me, I'm just saying. Right, Mike you know, McDaniels, you... Derek Carr next year. Are you hey, in? Hey, listen. You McDaniels and Carr. McDaniels and Carr. Hold on. Hold on. No, no. no. McDaniels, un... hold on. McDaniels under Daniels. Rivera. Under Rivera, just as offensive coordinator with Carr. Are you in? We agreed 
when we were talking, if you get a young offensive mind that can instill confidence in the QB, I'm in. I'd be right, in. We know what we want. Man. This divider is Carl <laughs> McDaniels. 2023. But it's more community. important. It's more important for me to get McDaniel than Carr. Let me make that very clear. <laughs> Carr without McDaniel, fuck that. McDaniel with any of these QBs. McDaniel's a Heineke who would be a fucking reality TV show. Do you have any idea how much fun that would be? Like that's what I'm saying. We would have to. We would have to apologize to the organization for everything we've said about ownership, everything we've said about the front office, stuff like that. We'd be like, we've always loved you guys. Get us some field passes. Let's talk to these cats because that's what we want to do. We will gladly backtrack everything <laughs> just to be there for McDaniel <laughs> Heineke. Shameless that would assholes be is what we are. <laughs> uh, yeah. Of course we are. I'm of just. It's are. what I always say. We are. We are finicky. We are finicky fan base. But the um, it, it's not our fault. <laughs> like it's. But we're self aware. <laughs> Sometimes, sometimes. I don't think we are aware in the moment. <laughs> I don't think we're no. aware. It's not in the moment. In the moment, you can't tell us shit. <laughs> you give right, it a few right. days. Like, oh, so right. here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna we're gonna come up with our <gasps> off season plan for the next uh maybe not the next episode because we'll do next season needs we'll to be next about, week needs to be the season review. We'll do the season in review and then maybe the next episode after that will be okay, what's your off season? Maybe plan? our playoff picks. Something like that. Oh, yeah, we'll continue the podcast talking about the playoffs. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, just cool. for yeah. kicks because it's still for us at the end of the day. And Washington Commanders fans can chime in with their playoff picks. Maybe we can even set up a pool. I have no idea. District divided pool. Um, but we'll see. Make that happen. Right. We'll see you guys later. Enjoy your weekend. In D.C., we're just hoping that you listen. Mm-hmm.